Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. For those of you who don't already know, ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV is a new over the air TV standard that's launching in the United States. For years, I've covered it on my YouTube channel with high hopes for the future. However, recently, some TV stations are encrypting their ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals with Digital Rights Management or DRM. While broadcasters claim DRM will be used to protect their content from copyright issues like piracy, it can yet be decoded by the only two external ATSC 3.0 tuners on the market and may put restrictions on network tuners and DVRs. What exactly is going on and why should you be concerned if you use an antenna for local TV channels? Now, before I get into my concerns about DRM encryption on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals, I need to make it clear that what I'm talking about in this video does not apply to most of you who use an antenna with a regular ATSC 1.0 tuner built into most TVs and DVRs. What I'm talking about in this video applies strictly to the new ATSC 3.0 TV standard that's still in the very, very early stages and isn't used by most people with antennas. Make sure to watch the full video and maybe watch it a second time as there is a lot of information in it. So first, DRM encryption is not the same type of encryption used by subscription TV services. It's an open encryption that works similar to a security key to make sure a TV broadcast signal is accessed by an authorized consumer grade tuner and not a tuner that can distribute the signals all over the internet like an illegal IP TV service. No payment or subscription is involved with a DRM key within a device. Local TV stations will continue to be free to the public, even with DRM encryption on next-gen TV. With all that being said, some local TV stations are putting DRM encryption on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals in what they claim is a way to protect their content from piracy. The hope is that DRM encryption will prevent illegal IP TV services from rebroadcasting their channels or a low-cast type service from popping up. At the same time, some early adopters of ATSC 3.0 using external tuners are seeing this message when trying to watch a certain local TV station because some are not yet DRM compliant. Specifically, the HD Home Run Flex 4K and Zapper Box. If you own one of these tuners and a local TV station turns on DRM encryption within their ATSC 3.0 signal, it won't decode and you'll see this message. You can find a list of TV stations that have turned on DRM encryption within their ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals, linked in the description of the video. They're highlighted in red with the little lock icon. To be clear, each of these stations can still be accessed in ATSC 1.0 if an external ATSC 3.0 tuner can't decode them. Now the good news is that both the Zapper Box and the HD Home Run each plan to have a solution within the next month or two to decode DRM encryption. All standalone TV sets with built-in next-gen tuners are DRM compliant and will already decode DRM encrypted channels. The bad news is that with DRM encryption, broadcasters can place certain restrictions on DVRs and network tuners. This concern was brought up nearly six years ago in a TechHive.com article fittingly titled, Does Next-Gen TV Spell Doom for Over-the-Air DVR? Within the article, vague answers were given about how DRM encryption might restrict DVR, so I decided to reach out to various organizations myself. Members of Pearl TV, the coalition of broadcast groups involved with the launch of ATSC 3.0, agreed to speak with me on Zoom to answer some of my questions, but requested that the meeting not be recorded and that I blur their faces to protect their identities. Looks like you're stuck looking at this beautiful face for the next five minutes. My first question of the group was why DRM encryption is being put on some ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals when the only two external tuners on the market, the HD Home Run and Zapper Box, can yet decode it. I was told that it took a while for tuner requirements to decode DRM to be set by the A3SA and that some manufacturers decide to sell tuners in the meantime and then update them once DRM encryption was turned on. For example, Tableau decided to wait rather than ship their units. It's also possible that the tuner manufacturers didn't expect DRM encryption to be put on the linear TV broadcasts on ATSC 3.0. This was actually the understanding from Tableau in the 2017 TechHive.com article. Which brings me to the next question. 
If it's presenting a hurdle to consumers and tuner manufacturers, why put DRM encryption on ATSA 3.0 broadcast signals in the first place? I was told that the content providers that produce TV shows want to protect their content from piracy, which we've all heard, but what does that mean? You see, right now with over-the-air TV on ATSC 1.0, it's very easy for someone to buy a few network tuners, connect them to an antenna and an internet connection, and boom, the TV stations are illegally being rebroadcast all over the internet. This is exactly what Lowcast did on a large scale in a very short period of time. Content providers are less inclined to offer valuable content like live sports on local TV stations if it's easily compromised. I was told that DRM encryption puts broadcast TV stations on a level playing field with streaming services like Netflix in terms of valuable content. The next question I asked was whether or not an internet connection is required to access a DRM encrypted ATSC 3.0 broadcast signal. I was told that an internet connection is not required and that over 8 million next-gen enabled TV sets sold over the past few years already work without an internet connection. However, last month I was told directly by Silicon Dust that the A3SA is requiring external tuners to be connected to the internet in order to decode DRM encrypted channels. In addition, the Zapperbox website says the following. ATSC 3.0 specifications will continue to evolve for several years and it is highly recommended to keep the box connected to the internet. We do not recommend buying the Zapperbox if you do not have internet access. I sent a follow-up email to the members of Pearl TV I met with on Zoom about whether or not an internet connection will be required for external tuners and DVRs. Here was the response. A persistent internet connection, while desirable to allow a selection of web-based content from local broadcasters, is not a requirement for content security, aka DRM encryption. Consistent information I received from two other sources back up this claim. Internet connection is no longer a requirement for external tuners or DVRs to decode DRM encrypted channels. As far as specific HD home run units possibly needing an internet connection to decode DRM encrypted 3.0 channels, I was told by an independent engineer that if DRM keys aren't baked into the device itself, an internet connection may be required, which would apply to HD home run units sold prior to this video. The next question I asked was about DVR restrictions. I was told that there aren't any plans to restrict certain programs from being recorded, but was informed about a few restrictions. Pitched to me as a way to prevent piracy on ATSC 3.0, a recording will be tied to a device like a DVR and can't be copied or watched through something like Plex, which means live TV may no longer be watched outside of the home. I was also told that some record programs may need to be watched within a specific time frame and can expire. However, it would be up to the TV station. This has me a bit concerned as NBC used flags to restrict the recording of the TV show American Gladiator back in 2008. The final question I asked the group was the concern that with DRM encryption, some TV stations might charge viewers to access their channel, similar to that of a streaming service like CBS All Access. I was told straight up that this won't happen because TV stations are obligated by the FCC to provide a public service that's free to every American. It's worth noting that every subscription-based over-the-air TV service from on TV in the 1980s to Ivaca more recently has failed. Free over-the-air TV is here to stay. Even ATSC President Madeline Nolan made it very clear in an interview with Antennas Direct at CES in 2023. Free TV is free TV, it will always be free TV. In fact, it's required by the FCC that it is free TV. While I have some additional concerns, which I'll talk about in a bit, I understand why broadcasters want to encrypt their signals with DRM. It helps prevent illegal IP TV services from easily taking their signals and rebroadcasting them all over the internet. In the Zoom meeting and at the NAB show last month, I was informed that the certification of devices or tuners through the Next Gen TV logo ensures that they are compatible with all current and future features of ATSC 3.0. Otherwise, issues with tuners, decoding, DRM encryption, or Adobe AC4 audio could lead to bad consumer experiences, slow down consumer adoption, or even result in ATSC 3.0 flopping. Basically, if you want to avoid possible issues, look for the Next Gen TV logo on the tuner. 
Some of you, including myself, may argue that DRM encryption ultimately won't stop piracy and will just inconvenience consumers. While members of Pearl TV I interviewed seem to agree with this, they made the point that some effort still needs to be made on the broadcasting side to limit piracy in order to keep valuable content on local TV stations. Plus with DRM, broadcasters have a better case against IPTV services in court. The goal of my YouTube channel has always been to promote and protect free over-the-air TV. I don't think that DRM encryption will result in the death of free over-the-air TV, but I do have some concerns about it. I worry that the red tape and expense of getting an ATSC 3.0 tuner DRM certified by the A3SA will limit affordable options. We've already seen it with Tableau's delayed release of their ATSC 3.0 DVR. The DRM certification process doesn't seem to be quick and easy based on the fact it's taking months for the HE Home Run and Zapper box. I'm told that both should be able to decode DRM encrypted channels within a month or two. Those of you who still believe DRM encryption is bad and shouldn't be placed on a free over the air TV broadcast signal, I completely understand your point of view. The FCC might take public comments about DRM encryption on ATSA 3.0 at some point, they aren't yet. When that happens, I'll be sure to alert everyone in a post. With enough pushback, a rule prohibiting DRM encryption on TV broadcast signals, or at least limiting it to a certain number of hours a week, might be made. However, this might backfire if what the broadcasters say is true, that content providers may stop offering valuable content on local TV stations like live sports due to lack of protection from piracy. I feel like new technology always comes with trade-offs. With the current ATSC 1.0 digital TV standard compared to analog, we gained a lot more channels but lost reliability in weak signal areas plus portable TVs. With ATSC 3.0, it seems we may gain more channels with better reception, picture quality, and even some cool features, but with some DVR and network tuner restrictions. I'll say what I said in a previous video of mine regarding the future of TV. With ATSC 3.0, broadcasters have one shot to do it right and not screw it up. Give the people the content they want and allow them to view it on the devices they want to on their own time. Too many restrictions will only slow consumer adoption of next-gen TV or drive people to streaming services. The only way this new TV standard is going to be successful is with affordable options for the average consumer. So far, the industry has not delivered despite promising that affordable tuners are coming for years now. Broadcasters want the FCC to speed up the transition to ATSC 3.0, which I don't exactly agree with, because it's the broadcasters themselves that have slowed down consumer adoption by prematurely encrypting some signals with DRM. Seriously, if you're a broadcast group and want people to upgrade to ATSC 3.0, why on earth would you put encryption on your station's signals when the only two external tuners on the market, you know, the ones people are more likely to buy over new TV, can't decode DRM encryption yet? In my opinion, broadcasters turning on DRM encryption before the HD Home Run and Zapper Box had working solutions was a sleazy move. DRM encryption should not be secretly put on local broadcast TV signals behind the backs of viewers and advertisers. It's a subject that needs to be discussed and decided whether it does more harm than good. Specifically, whether the cost and red tape of getting NextGen certified will limit the number of affordable tuners available to the public the impact DRM has on network tuners, and if DVR restrictions are a violation of this Supreme Court ruling. I'm not a lawyer, but any lawyers out there look into this. I'm also not a fan of what looks to be the end of out-of-home viewing with ATSC 3.0 broadcasts. I understand that the restriction is to prevent piracy, but I love to access my local channels outside my house on my air TV when I travel. If broadcasters don't want me to do this anymore, they lost me as a viewer, and I'm sure many of you as well. Plenty of great content on YouTube. There was a lot of information in this video, but here are a few points to take away. Broadcasters are beginning to put DRM encryption on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals, and what they claim is a way to protect their content from piracy. It's not the same type of encryption used for cable and satellite service. It's an open type of encryption. Within a few months, all external ATSC 3.0 tuners on the market should be able to decode DRM encryption, but again, this isn't a problem for most of you, probably 99% of you, who are using an ATSC 1.0 tuner or DVR. Even with DRM encryption, free over-the-air TV is not going away.
However, there might be some restrictions on ATSC 3.0 enabled DVRs and network tuners. Recording might be tied to a device within a home network and may expire. Out of home viewing may also no longer be a thing with ATSC 3.0. This is the first time I covered some of the flaws of the new ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV standard on my YouTube channel. I made this video to provide transparency to you guys, my viewers, and the American public on a topic that frankly no other media organization has covered. While this won't be the end of free over the air TV, my concerns in this video need to be brought to the FCC's attention before the green light is given to speed up the transition to ATSC 3.0. Let me know what you think about this whole thing in the comments section. Are you okay with DRM encryption on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals if it ensures valuable content will remain free over the air, or do you have concerns about it? Let me know. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. Visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. You can also click the thanks button. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA or sign up to my email list in the description. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.